Germany could be set to bring in a speed limit on the country's auto bonds when politicians agree a new government following an election last week. Politicians have for years debated imposing an 80 km per hour speed limit on the stretches of road which are famous for allowing motorists to drive as fast as they please. The Green Party has pushed for the move as it would help reduce CO2 emissions and make roads safer, but has so far failed to push a speed limit through Parliament. But the party emerged as potential kingmakers coming third in the vote last week and could enter either a traffic light coalition with the Social Democrats SDP, and Free Democrats FDP, or a Jamaica coalition with a ruling CDU slash CSU and FDP. Both coalitions are expected to back the speed limit with the SDP already behind the move and the FDP agreeing to support the restriction as a concession to the Greens if they join the Jamaica coalition. Greens co-leader Robert Tobeck said while campaigning in June the party would immediately introduce an auto bond speed limit if elected. But it is thought the party will also seek a standard 19 miles per hour in cities as well as a 50 miles per hour limit on rural roads and push its anti-car policy nationwide once in government, the local reported. In the most recent government, a coalition of the SDP and CDU slash CSU, the SDP pushed for a speed limit but the policy gained little traction. Critics of the policy have said German roads are already safe enough and blasted restrictions as an infringement on people's right to drive fast. The German Autobahn is the only European road network to have stretches without a speed limit, although an 80 miles per hour max speed is recommended, in a law that was introduced by the Nazi party in 1939. The 1973 global oil crisis, which increased oil costs by 400%, led to the brief introduction of a speed limit but Germans have had the right to accelerate ever since. Sunday's election saw the SDP win 25.7% of the vote while the CDU slash CSU managed on 24.6%. The bloc's worst ever result in a national election. The Greens, who made their first bid for the chancellery with co leader Annalena Baerbock, were running in third place with 14.1%, while the pro business free Democrats had 11.5% of the vote. No winning party in a German national election had previously taken less than 31% of the vote. The outcome has put Europe's biggest economy on course for lengthy haggling to form a new government while Merkel stays on in a caretaker role until a successor is sworn in. three-party governing coalition, with two opposition parties that have traditionally been in rival ideological camps, the environmentalist Greens and the business-friendly Free Democrats, would provide the likeliest trout to power for leading candidates the SDP and CDU slash CSU bloc. Chancellery nominee CDU slash CSU leader and Merkel's successor Armin Lachey and SDP head Olaf Scholz will be courting the same two parties.
Schultz is understood to be in talks to form a so-called traffic light coalition, because of the red, green and yellow party colors, with the Greens and FDP. Meanwhile Lachie is thought to be exploring a possible Jamaica coalition, after the black, yellow and green of the country's flag, with the CDU slash CSU Union, Greens and the FDP. The Greens traditionally lean toward the Social Democrats and the Free Democrats toward the Union, but neither have ruled out going the other way. The Free Democrats leader, Christian Lindner, appeared keen to govern, suggesting that his party and the Greens should make the first move. In a post-election debate with all the party leaders on public broadcasters EDF, Mr. Lindner said, about 75% of Germans didn't vote for the next Chancellor's party. So it might be advisable, that the Greens and Free Democrats first speak to each other to structure everything that follows. Bivok insisted that the climate crisis, is the leading issue of the next government, and that is for us the basis for any talks, even if we aren't totally satisfied with our result. While the Greens improved their support from the last election in 2017, they had higher expectations for Sunday's vote. The other option would be a repeat of the outgoing Grand Coalition of the Union and Social Democrats that has run Germany for 12 of Merkel's 16 years in power, but there was little obvious appetite for that after years of government squabbling. Everyone thinks that, this grand coalition isn't promising for the future, regardless of who is number one and number two, Lachey said. We need a real new beginning. Schultz said the results were a very clear mandate to ensure now that we put together a good, pragmatic government for Germany, 